Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I'll be discussing the third movie in the Halloween franchise, 1982's Halloween 3, The Season of the Witch, as directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. Although entitled Halloween 3, this movie is unique within the franchise itself in that it bears no connection to the movies that either preceded it or follow it. Uh, in that it has no canon within the franchise whatsoever and for all intents and purposes is a standalone movie with a completely separate plot. A number of franchises that exist have movies which don't always fit quite well within the overall continuity, especially those within the horror genre, but none more so, I think, than Halloween 3, I would say. This being the oddest movie of all in terms of a sequel. Well, perhaps 19, uh, the 1990 movie, sorry, Troll 2. Besides uh, from being widely known as one of the worst films ever made, it doesn't even feature any trolls, nor has anything to do with the first movie at all. But indeed, when you consider that all the sequels, prequels, reboots and remakes uh, within the Halloween franchise centre around the serial killer known as Michael Myers, this one stands out like a sore thumb and is certainly a curious oddity at the very least. No Halloween collection is complete without it, yet it has no bearing within the franchise at all. Halloween 3 was designed and intended to usher in a new era for the Halloween franchise, turning it into a more anthology style series with each movie centering around a different dark and disturbing story set on that spookiest and most macabre of nights, All Hallows' Eve. The basis was that it was believed Michael's story had run its course, and so both John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, who had been involved in the previous two movies, Carpenter, of course, as the original movie's director and producer, um, uh, well, and Hill as producer, if you like, with Carpenter acting as producer for the second, sorry, uh, had stated that the only way for them to remain involved in the franchise would be to produce a new movie without Michael uh, as the antagonist. And hence Halloween 3 was born and Myers was cancelled. It, it was an interesting concept and to be honest, if they hadn't already made Halloween 2 with Michael Myers, it might have been one that might have worked for a while. However, sadly, what we were left with was totally... Well, it totally confusion and dumbfoundment where exactly Michael had disappeared too, and indeed treated to a film that quite frankly was nothing much more than a glorified TV special. Audiences back in the day must have thought they were being hoodwinked. I know, I certainly did when I finally got around to watching this many years ago. I thought I'd kind of put the wrong film on. Um, and sat there <laughs> throughout its entire runtime waiting for a surprise appearance from that masked menace, only to find that whilst the film did include a great many masks, not one belonged to Myers. Anywho, the film itself starts off as a murder mystery of sorts. A toy shop owner, Harry Gum Grimbridge, as played by Al Berry, uh, is brought into hospital and later dies under mysterious circumstances. And it becomes up to Quincy, no, no apologies, uh, Dr. Dan Chalice, as played by Tom Atkins, to investigate Harry's death, along with Harry's daughter, Ellie, as played by Stacey Nelkin, in order to uncover the truth about the events that led to his untimely demise. Their search takes them to the creepily eerie town of Santa Mira, California, where Harry was last known to be picking up a order of Halloween masks from the seemingly only industry in town, the Silver Shamrock Novelties Factory, run by Colonel Cochran, as played by Dan O'Hillary. They soon discover that Cochran's intentions are less than industrious, um, and uncover a paganistic plot to use their best-selling masks to wreak a sinister and demented curse on America's unsuspecting public. Dan and Ellie are then raced to stop a television broadcast to air on ha Halloween night, Halloween, Halloween night that will literally turn everybody's brains into mush and other assorted slimy, creepy crawlies. So ultimately, this movie does have some interesting ideas, mixing elements of witchcraft, paganism, and science fiction. But you never really get the feel that it succeeded to deliver the goods on time, you know. 
Um, it really fails to kind of derive any sense of horror or urgency from its story, such that in fact the scariest thing about the movie is probably the price of the Halloween mask silver shamrock are churning out. That and one of the most disturbingly annoying kids adverts I think I have ever seen or that has ever been made, by which by the end just sounds like a smoke alarm going off in your head. Put it this way, given the pretense of the film, I'm pretty sure that that the TV you're watching it on will probably fry your brains quicker and more succinctly than the movie does. The thing is, it's just so dry and lifeless. There's simply no oomph to anything, no urgency, and most of the shocks are announced way before they even happen with a booming electronic score. That whilst is one of the movie's redeeming qualities, does serve to kind of overpower many of the movie's more goresque moments kind of takes some of the fun out of it, you know what I mean? I never actually knew the world of Halloween masks could be so mad. We do get a pretty decent tour, however, uh, of the manufacturing plant, which I, I enjoyed for sure. Although I did find it quite weird that they didn't actually have a Michael Myers mask for sale in the range. That would have sold like hotcakes and would have been pretty meta, uh, albeit definitely agreed, definitely confusing. <laughs> Touching on the soundtrack again, this was, again, uh, for the last time in the original series of sequels produced by Carpenter, and although not one of his most memorable, it does take some of the original Halloween themes with a bit more of an electronic twist. For me, I do enjoy Carpenter's work, no matter what the setting, and this still has some unsettling horror vibes, even if much of the rest of the movie was lacking in this respect. The film does enjoy somewhat of a cult status in retrospect, and I must admit, that I do have a different appreciation for it now. Watching it knowing that this film is not about Michael Myers certainly helps the focus, but it still doesn't change the fact that this movie is slow to really fire and never really offers any substantial horror that I can actually get behind. It just simply isn't the most thrilling of stories. There's definitely something weirdly creepy about it at times, and it did have some unique angles, but it just feels more corporate than perhaps was intended. And given that this was supposed to be the season of the witch, it really didn't feel like there was all that much whiff, witchcraft, whiff, whiffy, witchcraft going on. Mostly some kind of subliminal science fiction, but either way, it never really does anything to really explain how each of the elements of Silver Shamrock's diabolical scheme were put together, or what they're even supposed to do. Well, get out of it. I know what they're supposed to do, but get out of it, you know? Overall, as a sequel within the Halloween franchise, or as a standalone movie, it's tedious in both cases. It just needed to have a lot more oomph, um, but instead yields a story that, while intriguing in parts, just doesn't deliver any real level of horror or suspense. As an experiment and standalone movie, in an effort to kickstart an anthology-style franchise, it's somewhat unique. Definitely an interesting idea that might have just suited, to be honest, a short story or anthology movie of its own, you know? I just don't think there was enough here to really constitute or develop a feature film, and especially not as drawn out. In the end, for me, I can overlook the absence of Myers and, and take the film for what it kind of brings to the table on its own accord. The thing is, for me, that just isn't a whole lot. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Southwest Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.